Hey everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. I always try to give some energy this morning. It is, well, it is early afternoon for me, um, but if it is your morning, if it is your afternoon, if it is your evening, I just wanted to give y'all some love. Yes, give y'all some love on this Wednesday, okay? The week is almost done. The week is almost done. I hope you're proud of everything you've been able to accomplish this week and everything that you're continuing to accomplish everything that you're working on. Just wanted to give my love and my um, and my appreciation for y'all being here. Hey, seven pounds. If you are here in the chat, throw in the chat that you are present today, okay? If you are ready to get into some more technical documentation. Hey, okay, we have Aspa as well. Hey, friend from Zurich. All right. Yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. Wonderful. We have Ahmad joining us as well. Ahmad has been so, so present, all of these meetings, as well as Seven Pounds, as well as Aspa, y'all continue to come through and show up. And I absolutely love that, right? We're all getting into our learning. So this is really, really beautiful. Okay, y'all. So getting into today, right? What are we going to go over? So yesterday, just a little recap for folk who have not been here um, uh, the last couple days, but yesterday we went through our technical documentation and specifically we were talking about databases, right? So if we remember, we were going through our database uh, documentation, right? What is a database? What is the history of databases? When were they initially formed? By who were they initially formed? And then what are the various types of databases as well? And so we went through all of that and we built out some really robust technical documentation for that database page. So let's jump into it today. Um, and I want to show y'all a little something because you remember, if you remember, if you were at the last stream yesterday, y'all remember we were going through some things because we were trying to debug and figure out why wasn't this last, co um, last test passing, right? Why wasn't this last test passing? And I just want to show y'all a little something, something real quick. Okay, take a look at this. I wait, right? Like, yay, we did it. Okay, so I know y'all are like, wait, how Naya, how did you figure it out? How did you get that last test to pass? What was the problem, right? What was the problem? So let's, yay, we have our, we have our check from Free Code Camp. I'm gonna exit this out. And let me tell you y'all, this is why, um, uh, <laughs> this is why coding is, is so, sometimes it really gets on your nerves, right? Sometimes it really gets on your nerves. Um, thank you so much, Ahmad. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, ah, we have Maze. Hey, Maze. Y'all don't even know. Maze is the homie, the, the, the sister from another mother. Okay. Maze is the homie. Thank you so much, Maze, for coming. I so appreciate you. I love you, girl. Um, so we're trying to figure out, so what happened, right? What was the issue? And y'all, like I said, sometimes coding is so annoying because guess what it was, y'all? Guess what it was, right? It wasn't the quotation marks. Sorry. It wasn't the question marks, which we thought it was initially. What it was, was that I had this D right here, this D in database, honey, it was capitalized. It was capitalized. So it was saying, I don't know what you're talking about. What is that? I'm, I'm not going there, right? And so the issue was that the ID that this, um, this anchor tag was referencing was capitalized. And so the test was not gonna pass. It was not gonna pass. And so I just fixed it. I went through with a fine tooth comb. You have to be patient with code because you have to remember that code always follows what you tell it to do. Computers listen to you. So if your code is broken, it might just be you, all right? So just go through your code with a fine tooth comb, take a step back, take a little bit of a pause and say, you know what, what's going on here? And it was something that simple, right? It was something that simple. So yes, yes, exactly. Just, just like Ahmad had mentioned, IDs are case sensitive, all right? They are case sensitive. And so that means that if you put a lowercase d, when you mean to, when you mean to put an uppercase d or the other way around, it's not gonna recognize what you're doing. So you have to be exact in coding. That's that's a beautiful thing about writing code, right? You have to be very specific within HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, it doesn't allow a lot of leeway. And some might actually say that JavaScript does allow a lot of leeway and that's why you should use TypeScript, but that's a whole nother conversation. So exactly, IDs are case sensitive. And you can also see right now, I have a new format y'all. Instead of me being on the side of the code, I'm down here at the bottom. And I like this format a lot as well. It brings more, um, more space to the screen here. 
So finally, I'm going to scroll down here, y'all, and you can see we have a uh, check, 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 check. The checks keep coming in. We love it. And those are all of our checks for the technical documentation page. And we can preview it here as well. And we can see that we have our docs here. What is data in general? What is a database? History of databases, types of databases. You see that big D? I'm going to change that later. And then what is the difference? And so all of everything now works. We have our code snippets as well. Everything is happy. Everything is happy. Um, and, and this is exactly what we want to do. And we can also see, remember, we had learned a little bit about media queries in Ramon's um, uh, conversation with y'all. In Ramon's stream, he, he went through a little bit of media queries with y'all. And so we did the same. So we um, set a media query for this so that once the, um, the minimum width is 700 pixels, then things are going to change, right? So um, we're going to have the body flex. Um, and so if we expand this out, we're going to see some changes in the code, which satisf satisfies um, what Freed Code Camp is looking for. So at a regular stance, or um, at a, sorry, at a laptop view, right? For example, so a laptop or a TV view, our code is going to, our project is going to look like this. So we have our database documentation to the left, um, as well as our what we would call a table of contents here. So I can click what is data. It's going to take us directly to the what is data section. The what is database is going to do the same as the same for all of them going down. So that's, that's really cool. And now we have an example of some technical documentation. All right. So this is awesome. Hey, learner. Welcome, friend. Hi again. Don't worry. We love the all caps. You're always welcome to use all caps here. This is a welcome in space. Okay. So we have our, um, our technical documentation page ready, set, and ready to go. Now what we're going to do is remember our goal is to not just have this information on, um, on Free Code Camp and our personal little thing, but we're trying to get this access to the community. All right, men in the community. Um, so we want to make sure that everyone has access to this. And we're going to put this code in GitHub as well. I'm going to close this preview. We're going to put this code in GitHub. And then we're going to also ship it to Netlify. Hey, Zafer. Hey, friend. Welcome. See you coming in from LinkedIn. Thanks so much for checking in. Always appreciate you. Um, love it, love it, love it. So if you have um, written technical documentation before, throw it in the chat. What did you write it on, right? And sometimes um, when people think of technical docs, they think, oh, it must only, you know, be part of this big software engineering company. Um, it has to be the docs page of that. But really what we're doing is practicing writing technical, doc technical documentation, even within Freed Code Camp right now. So if you've done this process, then that is a thumbs up. But also like when you are writing out some, um, some documentation for the code that you have written in the, in the past. So documentation can be as small as a couple of different comments in your code. That counts as some documentation as well. It doesn't have to be something completely completely separate. But if you have done that before, we have a yup from Zafer as well. Yes, I love this. You've written documentation before. That is perfect. That is perfect. All right. So we have all of this here. Excellent. Excellent. So what we're going to do is, as always, we're going to take the code that's in Free Code Camp and we want to put it over into VS Code. All right. So we have a copy there. So I'm going to copy and paste our HTML here. Copy and paste the whole thing. That's okay. Okay, let me let me just copy and paste this really quickly. I'm gonna copy and paste this over. Oh, and that is the wrong one, but that's okay. All right, and let's grab. Yeah. All right. So I have a a brand new um, VS Code project up for y'all. So you can see here, and I'll make this bigger so folks can see. Really big. Um, but I created a free code camp underscore tech docs folder within um, VS Code already. So if you haven't done that already, what you're going to do is um, either press this like plus folder button or there's ways also to, you know, create a brand new folder, add the folder to workspace in your in your code space as well. Um, but I've done that all already. And just to make sure that we have our structure ready for our um, HTML and our CSS. So I'm going to paste this all in on a Mac. You can use command V. Beautiful. And all of our code is here. I'm going to save that. Remember, we saw the little um, the little white bubble. When you make any changes and the white bubble is there, you want to get rid of it. 
because it says, oh, your changes are not saved. So I'm going to press Command S on a Mac in order to save it. Or you can also go to File and then Save As or Save. All right. And oh, and, and and so I had asked a little bit earlier, you know, who has worked with technical documentation page, pages before um, and, and Learner had mentioned that they had filed issues, but hope to write docs someday soon. Filing issues is you don't even know, Learner. You don't even know. Filing issues is massive, massive, massive help for folk who are writing technical documentation. Right. If we have a um, uh, if we have a. A typo somewhere in our technical documentation, or if something is not clear in our docs, what we want is for always for, for people who are going through those docs, file an issue, right? Let us know, let the, the coding team know that mm, this, this, this thing doesn't actually make sense to me. Let me let you all know so that you can help me fix it, right? Um, and that's not a small contribution. That is a, that's a big contribution learner. So it was only a couple of minor fixes for learn HTML and learn CSS paths on web.dev, but that's huge. That's huge, right? Because you are improving the docs for people who are coming after you, right? And that's love. And I love that, right? That, that speaks to an investment that you have in making sure that the docs are clear for folk who come after you. Come on, you're good people, you're good people. And I love that. And Ahmad had mentioned that he has also written some docs. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, and Ramon has here silly advice, but live stream yourself. And it's not silly advice. Live stream yourself reading docs aloud. Okay. And you'll find a typo or two. That's how I made my first free code camp contribution. Yes, 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 yes. That's amazing. Free Code Camp contribution. So you can have a contribution to the Freed Code Camp repo. All right. If you're doing this process, that is huge, right? That is huge. So that's perfect. Thank you so much for that suggestion, Ramon. Um, leave it better than you found it. That's the key right there. That's the key. Perfect, perfect. That's right. Okay. And then um, uh, Zafer has al also mentions writing doesn't mean anything. Making personnel to apply um, uh, needs for WIP for them to understand. I'm trying to understand what you're saying here, but type it again for me, uh, Zafer, so that I can I can um, better understand what you're saying here. But yes, the goal is to always just make sure that you are leaving the place as as good or if not better than you found it. Um, when you're building out technical docs. So I want you to all say that I am a technical writer. Today, you've started the process of building out te technical documentation, and that is excellent, right? That is excellent. So let's get us started here. We have our index.html all loaded up. This is all perfect. And what we're going to do is also grab the CSS as well from Freed Code Camp. We only have a little bit of CSS for now, but we're going to build that out today. All right, so in the styles.css, I'm going to... Add that, and what do I need to do, everyone? We see that white bubble. I need to save it. I need to save it. So I just saved it, so that's why the white bubble went away. We have that. I'm going to exit out this little welcome page. It's just um, standard for folk. You don't need it um, when you're building out your projects. Um, but perfect. So we have our index.html. It is linked to our styles.css. And let's see if we can see this on our local computer. If we can visualize this. So not within the free code camp like environment, but actually within our local computer. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, right click on this index.html page. And I'm going to go down. Remember, a few few uh, classes ago, maybe a couple weeks ago, we had installed the Open with Live Server or the Live Server extension. And just a reminder again, if you want to install that extension and you don't have it, maybe you're new to the class, you're going to go to this button in VS Code right here. You're going to click that button and then you're going to search for Live Server. Live Server. Excellent. And so you're going to um, pick this one, this one right here. Alrighty, so you're gonna click that and then download it. So let's get back out of there. We're gonna right click, press open with live server and try to find, yes, it shows up on our page. So we see here as a reminder for folk who are new, this little, um, it, it, it doesn't even look like a URL, right? Cause normally we see URLs, we would think, oh, it, it would usually have a .com, for example, for the CSS tricks um, website, or, or like we said here, uh, .com as well for, and then the HTTPS in front. 
but this is actually a URL for your local computer. Just a reminder, I know this is review for a lot of folk, but this is a, um, a URL for your local computer. Again, if I were to um, add this to the, boop, add this to, um, to the comments here, if you were to click on that link, you cannot see what's going on. You have no idea what's going on because that is specific to my computer. Um, and oh, Learner had asked, what was the issue with the IDs yesterday? Sorry, I joined a little bit late. No problem, Learner. We went over it in just the first few minutes. Um, but the IDs yesterday, the issue was that um, I had a um, I had a capital D where I was supposed to have a lowercase. And so the IDs didn't recognize. And we were we were reminded by Ahmad as well as the team that IDs are case sensitive. So you always have to look through your code with a fine tooth comb and make sure that you are catching all those little snags that might keep your code from running. I know, right? I know. Sad face. Sad face. <laughs> it's, it's that thing. Yeah, exactly. All righty. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So wonderful. We see our code and this code looks good. It looks good for HTML. Um, but we can add some styling. We can add a little bit of styling to this to make it look a little bit prettier, right? Give it, give it a little bit more oomph. All right. So we have this here. We can leave this up. I'm just going to minimize that real quick and go back. Perfect. It let us know where, where our uh, code is. I'm going to exit that out. So let's add a little bit more, um, more styling to this, okay? To make it look like some nice docs. So I'm gonna push this media query down to the bottom and then start some, some stuff up front. So we have right now, and let's take another peek at our, at our um, page here. So database documentation. All right, so let's start. Let's just start in the main section. So what is data? Okay, we, it's a lot of black and white. That's fine, but let's divide these up by sections. So number one, um, ooh, yeah, yeah, good idea, Learner. Um, Learner had mentioned we can use a Google font like Alato or, Lin or Inter. We can use different Google fonts. We could change up the fonts here. Um, that is an excellent idea. Um, we can throw a, a background color on this. We could change the colors of these, um, these as well. We can um, put some put some uh, boxes possibly around the code snippet so that they stand out more. Um, lots of different things that we can do. Um, first of all, let's change the background color of this, of this page. We want it to stay white. That's right, also Ahmad. Um, Ahmad had mentioned um, about adding smooth scrolling to the body. I really like that. Um, so Ahmad said, scroll behavior equals smooth. All right, so that's an option. Let's add that and see what happens initially. So we're gonna go into our code. I think that is behind here, perfect. So Ahmad had mentioned um, to our body. So we would um, target the body tag, boop, boop, and then say scroll behavior, perfect. And then we'd say smooth. Let's save that. And I think we might, I forgot if the live server actually just, um, like it automatically reloads, but let's just make sure. All right, so I'm gonna bring this over here and we can see, all right. All righty, all right, scroll behavior smooth. Now click a link. And let me highlight that for Ahmad as well. Now click a link. That is data, history of databases. Okay, it seems to be doing the same. But so I'm assuming that scroll behavior swoove would make it just be a smooth move to, to where, where, it would, where it should be. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. And that is linked. Let's actually, yep, it is. It is. Oh, let's check to make sure everything is linked properly. Yeah, okay, okay. So the CSS is linked. And that's because we see that the media query activates when the minimum, um, when the minimum width is uh, 700 pixels, right? So the media query activates when the minimum width is seven pixels. So it does, the CSS is working. And yeah, it is weird, Ahmad. It is weird that the, um, uh, that the smooth didn't work right now or yet, but it's probably something in the CSS that we can target in order to make that work. Let's do a little research as a team and try to figure out like, what else do we need in order to make that scroll work? So we have some thoughts here. So let's, um, let's comment this just for now and see what else we can do. 
So we have here, and I'll put these up side by side so that we can see the changes in real time. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Love it, love it, love it. All right. Make this teeny bit smaller so everyone can see. Okay, everyone can see? Beautiful. All right, so we have our CSS here. We have our body tag. Remember, if we hit that body tag, then everything in the body should change. So if we wanted to just change like the background color of this body, background color, you'd highlight background color, and we can do something like a bisque. A bisque. Super cute. And we'll see if that applies. Up oh, and it applies immediately. Okay. Looks a little, looks a little meh. Looks a little meh. Let's change this color. What what color? What color do y'all want it to be? Background color. Let's see. Throw throw a um a hex code in um in the chat if you want it to be a specific background color. Background color, and then which one we can have? Like a corn silk, okay. Oh, I think it might. Oh, okay. So Ahmad had mentioned it. Um, it mu you think it must be set on the HTML tag? Good idea about the scroll behavior. We'll check that as well. And then if you where uh, through throw where you learned that the link to where you learned that in the chat as well, so other people can look look at the um, chat too. Okay. And change it to a little honeydew situation and then change. Oh, cute, cute, cute. All right, cute. Okay. Love it, love it. So we have a background color on this. And as well, we know that things are going to change, which is perfect. And also, we have these links here. The links look fine. However, we also have these, um, um, these bullet points. So does anyone remember how do we get rid of bullet points on links? And if you don't remember, let's practice. What you can always do is um, throw it into your a browser of choice, how to get rid of bullet points on unordered lists, CSS. Perfect. All right, so yeah, excellent. Yes, y'all know it, y'all know it. Perfect. So Ahmad had, had mentioned it and uh, Learner had also mentioned it as well. List style type, none. Perfect. So let's add that here to our, um, to our links. We're specifically talking about the links within our nav bar. However, there are no other links within. Oh, there are. There are. So let's, let's target it correctly. So we have our nav bar allies. So we can do, we'll get out of here and do class nav bar yep exactly so you can do nav ul good point so we yeah let's let's try that and see what happens nav and then we're going to target the ul and is this correct everyone you always gotta i'm never gonna i'm never i try not to tell people the answers but actually just say oh is this correct what do y'all think right because we're we're learning collectively so nav ul, and then we're saying um, list style type. We're gonna set that to none. Okay, alrighty, let's save it and let's see what's happening. Excellent, excellent, y'all are on it, beautiful. So when we scroll over, excellent, we no longer see the, um, the bullet points. That looks great, looks much better. All right, so um, yeah, so this and, Great point. The carrot, this this carrot, there are different carrots. This carrot sign means it's a direct child, a direct child to the nav element. So we were able to grab that. Love it, love it. And then what else can we do to this nav, right? They look great. How do we get rid of the underlines, everyone? Let's research how do you get rid of the underlines and throw it in the chat once you find it. Underlines for the anchor tag. On a anchor tag. Boom. That's okay. That's okay. Seven pounds. Seven pounds said they forgot. Um, but it is text decoration none. Excellent. Excellent job. Text decoration none. Y'all are on it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So text decoration none for the anchor tags. So let's do nav and then we'll try, let me just take a look at this. 
right? We have the ULs, ULLI anchor. There's lots of different ways to, to target this, but let me, let me try something. Um, is it space? I think it might be space, but let's see. Um, text, duration, none. Will this work, y'all? We got it. We got it. Text decoration none. All right. So now that when we click these things, boom, gone, boom, gone, boom. Beautiful. Excellent. 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 I love that. All right. So we're getting rid of all those things and let's come back into the body. Let's change this font, right? Let's change this font. It's a little meh. It's a little meh. So what fonts do we want to, get to? We can go through and see a list of um, CSS fonts. There's Google fonts as well, um, lots of different fonts, font families, font styles. Which one do we want for this technical documentation page? You want it to be readable um, uh, for others, so not too, too fancy. Um, but there's lots of different options here. So mm, let's see, we will choose. None of these look too, too great to me, but um, maybe this one, this Noto Sands. So we will then do, this is under font families, font families here. So we're gonna throw font family, boom, and then see if Noto Sands will show. Does that need a, hmm, that might, I don't, I don't think that will actually work. Yeah, it's a Google font though, that's correct. So let's see. Will I actually grab that? Nope, okay. No toast sans. Well, of course it's a, it's a part of the sans serif family. So we can just add that. Okay, sans serif family. And, oh, I totally forgot, look at me. We can also do something like Arial here. And I don't know if we need the, um, is it Arial? Yeah. I don't know if we actually need, yep, okay, everything has changed. So we see this is what it looks like for Arial. It's a little bit closer to um, what the couch base font looks like as well, um, but I like it. All right, remove the quotes, yeah, exactly. Yep, and it'll, it should still work. Yep, excellent. Perfect, so Font Family Arial. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so this is looking better. This is looking better. Um, what do we want to do? Yeah, what else, what other CSS do y'all want to add to these things? We have a couple of different things that we can do, um, but I just want this to be, you know, give it a little bit of oomph. Like, can we add something around these uh, code snippets to really like, Make sure that they look like code snippets. Maybe there's some CSS that we can find for code snippets. That would be cool. Sans serif to, on sans serif to make Helvetica. Oh yeah. You can make it Helvetica as well. There's lots of options here. Syntax highlighting, yup. Oh, I like that. Oh man. Okay, so code, um, code HTML syntax highlighting. Oh, I wonder if, there's a way to do that. Create a syntax highlighter. Um, there's Prism JS for that, or or Seeky JS, right? And and just like Ahmad has said as well, we can apply a background color to to the code snippets as well. Um, so let's do that first. Let's add a background color just to make it stand out a little bit. So um, remember all of our code snippets, and let me save this. All of our code snippets have the name code perfect so we can just target it that way and we want all the code snippets to look the same so we're going to say code and then what background color do we want to so, so so that it kind of looks like what we're typing in now like an ide in a way so we're going to hit background color and then what background color should it be if we do black then we might have to change the code um letters to be white or something like that so that it actually stands out um okay yeah throw it in so let's we can try black here 
And then what we'll do is actually change the color of the words to white. Save it. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Not the cutest thing in the world, but that's all right. So what this is doing is adding the um, adding the background to just the uh, the wording, right? The lettering here. And what we want to do, yeah. Oh, I like that as well, um, Ahmad. Green or dark gray. Um, what we want to do is add it to like the whole surrounding box, right? The parent element. So let's see, everyone. So we're gonna change that. Boop, 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 boop. Then we'll get rid of that for now. Okay, we'll change that back. Lovely, lovely. All right, and we're gonna make sure that this is formatted. I'm just gonna bring this out so that we can make sure. Format document, perfect. Alrighty, so code. We have the section. Types of databases, headers, UR, ULs, DLs, and then these code snippets. All right. So everyone, how do we get the code to only show up, to not just show up on the words, but on the entire code section? Like, I want this white space to be black as well. How would I do that? Oh, yeah. Y'all are on it. Okay, so Ahmad had mentioned, what if we set display block on the code? Let's try it. And then Learner had mentioned it as well, to block? Yes. And we and, and uh, Learner had mentioned possibly doing display block on the pre. So let's, let's try both and see what happens. So for first, we're gonna try the pre and we're gonna say display block, block, beautiful. And then y'all, should I be putting the, um, uh, the background, color stuff in here or should I put it only on the code section? I'm not going to have the, I'm not going to give you all the answers. I want, I want us to, to go through it together. So what should I do? Should I put the background, like background color right here? Or should I put that only on the code, actual code element? Throw it in the chat. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's true. So what Learner has said is that it should work on the pre-2 because there's nothing else in pre currently. So um, some of the code snippets have pre surrounding it. Yeah, pre surrounding it. Um, so that should work on that one. And I think the code is block by default. Excellent point. Excellent point, Ahmad. All right, let's try this. Let's save it. Oh, ho, yes. It works. And let's try to change the color to white so that everyone can actually see the code. Yay! We did it. Excellent. Excellent. So that works for the one. Um, uh, so here we're grabbing the parent element of the code snippet. Um, and only one of them currently has the pre tag because the rest are just single line elements, um, single line cone snippets. So this looks good. We're making great progress. I wish we did have syntax highlighting, no lie, on this part. Um, and yeah, exactly. So Ahmad had mentioned that we should um, add some padding to this as well. So for the pre, let's add some padding here and then we can do padding. What will we say? Like um, we could say 30 pixels to be exact. Great. And that will give us, oh, we have a little bit of cutoff here. That's really interesting. Non-relational. Um, that'll give us padding um, from the, uh, you could do top, right, left, bottom. Um, and so that's looking better. That's looking better. I love it. I love it. So how do we grab the, um, how do we make a code block for the other section as well? And then we'll just um, summarize this up and we'll ship it to GitHub and Netlify. I think that'll be the last thing we do for this. Ship it to GitHub and Netlify and then we'll get started on the second project, which I think y'all are working on currently, which is the cat painting project as well. I know that things had um, things had changed a little bit. Um, yeah, okay, so how about Overflow X, uh, Learner had mentioned, oh, sorry, X, Overflow X. Yeah, so let's add, or just overflow scroll. Yeah, oh, I like that a lot. So let's add some overflow scroll, overflow. Ooh, we can do, we can do overflow wrap. Then we could just say, well, 
we can break word. We can normal. Let's see what happens. Boop, boop, boop. All right, let's break word. Then we try to do overflow. Overflow period and then scroll. There we go. Oh, yeah. Now we see everything. Thank you. Thank you, learner. Beautiful. All right. So now we can scroll and see everything. Yep. Ooh, maybe set white space nor norami normal. I think you said you mean normal, I'm sure. So let's hit um white space and then we're gonna have normal here for the for the term. Yep. Ah, okay, so it, it scrunched it all up. So what I'm going to do is we want to have those little changes. So I'm going to just copy that out first. Yeah, normal. Exactly. Don't worry. I got you. Avad. Don't worry. Um, we're going to keep that for now because we want to see that definition, those changes. This is looking good. This is looking really good. All right. So we have the databases. We have a history of databases. We are we got rid of our um, our bullet points um, and we also got rid of our underlines. Um, this looks solid. Things are looking great. We have a couple of other code snippets again. So let's try to target those other code snippets, which are just targeted with code. Um, and how would we get the block to, to show up for just that single line? Right. So let's look it up together how to get um, background color. Well, we know how to do that on a code snippet. We're really doing it in CSS, so I'll, I'll say CSS. All right, so they say how to set um, background color, but we let's be more specific. We don't want it to just be, we want it to exist on the parent element, um, but the other parent elements have so much more in them. So let's try and see if we can target them specifically. Um, do, 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 do. All right, so we have section, section types of databases. So this one has the pre wrapper. And then what we'd like to do, where's our other code elements? What you can always do is Command F which allows you to find on a Mac. You're gonna look for things that say code. Great, we've already taken care of that one. Ah, but we see this one too. All right, DT code. And then what are the other ones? DT code, DT code, and then just code after that header. All right, I remember there is a way. And y'all, I haven't used CSS in a minute. I'm more of um, working within framework specifically, but um, let's see how you can get like the sibling. How do y'all target a sibling? Yeah, excellent question, Ahmad. So um, we're, we're trying to figure out how do we target this, a sibling of the code element? Um, so here we have the code element, but we want it to be, uh, we want it to have a background color of black. So we see that this, this one here has the background color of black, but the, all the other ones did not. And that's because we specifically targeted the pre element for, for this code one, but the other ones don't have a pre, right? The other ones don't have a pre. So how do we grab the, how do we make sure that the CSS is applied to this code snippet as well? And not just being that, but, but elongating to be the whole thing. We can set a, let me just see here. We, we might be able to just set a display of block. So let's see. Might not work, but um, CSS is all about trying things. Display, we're gonna set that to block. And then let's throw a background color on it. Black. Yeah, yeah, we did it, we did it, perfect. Then we'll do color equals white. Ooh it, ooh it, we did it, ooh it, ooh it. Perfect. It just takes a little, a little trying of a little something different. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, and this is coming off the page because it's just right there, but boop, let's scrunch that. That is awesome. Okay, so now the code snippets are standing out a lot more, right? So we added the display property of block so that it takes up the entire width of, um, of our entire unit. It's gonna display it as a block rather than just taking up that, um, 
that content. And now we can see that the code snippets are present and they look great. Let's add a little bit of padding left to it so that we slide that um, slide that text over just a little bit. Well, you're not actively sliding the text over, um, but you're giving that text some padding. So we'll also do a padding left. I'm gonna throw the same amount, 30 pixels. Great, 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 great. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Let's add some um, padding top as well. Let's just do padding in general and see how they change. Nice. All right, so we've got some structure around these code snippets and it added 30 pixels around the entire, all the sides. Yeah, okay. So we have a couple of questions in here. Yep, um, you can, you can if you did want to just change the pre to just be code. You can do that as well. Um, uh, I was trying to make sure that we maintained, you know, we weren't changing the code around as much in order to accommodate our CSS. I want to make sure that we left our, our code as much, as similar as possible, but you can do that as well. You can just change the pre to just be code and then everything would apply to everything there and it would be okay. Yep. Um, and yeah, exactly. No, that's true. That's true. Just like Ahmad said, um, we don't have to repeat the CSS, just change the pre to pre, pre dash code. Yeah. All right. So let's do that. So we can boop. Let me comment that out and then do pre slide. Oh, not sans serif code and it will apply to all of them. Yes, yes, yes. So we're, we're remembering that we're not doing things. We're, uh, we're making sure that we're not repeating ourselves. Our code is dry now. It was very wet. It was very repetitive. Now it's dry. So do, um, uh, uh, don't repeat yourself. D-R-Y, dry. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Sweet. All right, so this is looking really good, y'all. I love this. I'm such a fan. Let's ship this up. Um, let's throw this up to GitHub. Beautiful. And we have our first, have our first um, technical documentation page. So remember, there's ways that I would normally do this. I would normally use the uh, the terminal in order to sign into Git, and then um, uh, pull these all, pull down whatever changes that I have in, in Git and GitHub on a remote repository, and then ship this all up to um, to GitHub. That's my normal process. However, for this process, and I know that folk, you know, might be um, they're not as familiar with Git and and GitHub and specific working within the terminal and doing a lot of stuff in the terminal. So um, uh, what we're going to do is just copy and paste this all over to GitHub into our GitHub files um, and then uh, commit the changes there. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so Ahmad had, had also mentioned um, that we can try the smooth scrolling on HTML. Okay, perfect. So we have our HTML and where was that smooth scrolling? So smooth scroll HTML. Let's see how we can grab that. How to create a smooth scrolling effect. Section clicked me, screw scroll. Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. Okay, oh, okay. So we're gonna throw it on the entire HTML. Oh, thanks. Oh, I'm so sorry, Ahmad, I totally missed that. Um, Ahmad said I, I sent the link a few minutes ago, but I totally missed it. So my apologies, friend. So let's add that to our CSS. We'll add it up at the top. We have our body and let's go right before the body. We're going to do HTML, Ooh, not, no suitor selectors. And we're going to add scroll behavior smooth. Love it, love it, love it. So let's go over here now to what is databases. Ooh. Thank you, Ahmad. Yes, 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 yes. What is a database? Oh, that's nice. That is a very nice scroll. What is the, ooh, look at that. Goes all the way down to what is the difference. And then types of databases. That is incredible. Thank you, friend. You are always making this a wonderful process. Perfect. All right. Let's ship this up, everybody. So we have it. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to go over to GitHub right now. I think I have it open. Yep. So let's go over here. Um, we're going to go back into our GitHub session. Perfect. Naya Macklin Couchbase. Remember, we did our Katherine Johnson project. So we're going to add another project here. And that is, um, we're going to add a new repository here. And so we're going to call this repository technical documentation. Check if it's available. Yes, it's available. No description is needed. 
it'll be public so everyone here can look at it and play with it. Um, uh, no, we no need to add a readme or a license right now, um, but you can. Um, we can get into that later about which kind of license you might want to use. But let's just create the repository for simplicity's sake. Yay, perfect. Okay, so technical documentation is now created. Now, I know all of this looks like, whoa, what's going on here? Remember, um, this is all things that you would do if you were working it within the terminal to make sure that GitHub and Git and your local computer are all talking to each other. However, what we're going to do is just squeeze on past all this process and just create a new file right here. All right, so we're going to call this the index.html, boom. And then I am going to take all of my code from the index.html, do, 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 lovely. Going to copy and paste it on over. Easy peasy, quick and easy. All right. And what we're going to do is commit those changes and then press commit changes yet again. Now our index.html exists. It's cooking up, as I say, but it's, it's, um, it's thinking about creating it right now. So once that gets created, sorry, it's taken a long time, everyone. Um, but once that gets created, then we can go back and we're going to include our, our CSS. So I'm going to copy and paste the CSS over. Boom. Love it, love it, love it. And what I'm going to do as it thinks about its life is go back to the technical documentation. Yep, we have it here. It's created. We're going to add a file. So we're going to create a new file here. And we're just going to copy and paste that in there. And what are we going to name this? The same as we named it over in VS Code, styles.css. Commit those changes. Commit it here. Yes, now it exists. So we'll click our technical documentation. You can see both are here, which means that anyone can now come and see that it exists. I'm going to throw this into chat so that y'all can see it as well. Boom. Beautiful, beautiful. So you can come and take a peek. And also, Learner had mentioned, um, in VS Code, you can see there's an icon um, below the magnifying glass to cr directly create and push to a repo. That is correct. So there's lots of different ways to do this. You can do it via the terminal, which is my normal way of doing it. You can also see we have the magnifying glass here. This is the source control icon, which means um, tying it to, to GitHub, talking to GitHub, and then directly pushing to GitHub. If we were to click that, we would initialize a repository and publish to GitHub, follow all these on-screen instructions, and do that process that way. Um, but we just did the quick and what they call quick and dirty way. We just did it the quick way just to get it up as soon as possible. And so we have that there. Beautiful. And now y'all already know what we like to do. We like to go into Netlify and deploy things. Okay. So let's deploy these things to Netlify. I'm already logged in. This is perfect. Remember we have our Grace, um, ooh, not our Grace. I was going to say Grace Hopper, y'all. Our Katherine Johnson, um, uh, our Katherine Johnson page from before. And we're just going to add a new site. So we're going to add and we're going to import an existing project. This is already tied to GitHub. So we should be able to just press this button here. Press it here. It says, I am authorized. And now it sees my technical documentation page. I'm going to click it. And yes, we want the main branch. We want all of that. And just deploy it. Deploying. Deploying. Site deploying progress. It's going to take a couple seconds to deploy. Oh, yes, learner. Yes, yes, yes. Grace Hopper was very, very inspirational. Let's just take a quick little detour because everyone needs to know about Grace Hopper. Um, if you don't already, Grace Hopper, let's learn just a little bit about who Grace Hopper was. So Grace Hopper was an American computer scientist, mathematician, and U.S. Army Admiral, right? Sorry, U.S. Navy Admiral. She was one of the first programmers of the, of the um, Harvard Mark I computer, and she's a pioneer in computer um, programming who invented one of the first linkers. Grace Hopper was huge, everybody, huge within the field. Um, and we don't really hear about many folk, right, especially many women who are um, big in the computer science field. And these are some of the giants. So Grace Hopper. And then we had also learned about Katherine Johnson as well. Katherine Johnson as well, who was one of the prominent and she was black she was a black woman right one of the prominent mathematicians um and whose calculations allowed for us to get up onto allowed for us to have our first steps onto the moon so 
Katherine Johnson and Grace Hopper, household names within the computer science and software engineering field. So they are um, some of the most inspirational um, women who have done so much work for us. So uh, they are <laughs> two women that I absolutely look up to. So thank you so much, Lauren, for mentioning that Grace Hopper was hugely inspirational as she was. All right, so now we have our Netlify um, app, which is here, and we have everything created. This is perfect. We have made our first steps of technical documentation here on our page, um, and we learned all about databases in the process. So what is data, right? What is a database? History of databases, types of databases, and the names of various database and database companies. And then we know that um, what a relational database is. We have a little code snippet that would represent um, some, some content for what a relational database does. We have some couch-based specific code here for a non-relational database, because non-relational, remember, is the same as not only SQL, right? Not only SQL. Um, and SQL is a, is a structured query language, if we're remembering some of the vocab from yesterday. And then we have a hierarchical database developed in the 1960s and 70s and object-oriented databases as one of the last examples. And then trying to also think about the differences between relational databases, which is SQL or, or SQL, um, relational databases, remember those are tables and rows, versus no SQL databases, which is you have a lot more flexibility in the structure of your database as well. It allows for better scaling um, and a lot more flexibility as well for your data. So thank you all so much for coming with me on this journey to building out our database documentation. Let me, um, uh, let me add this to the chat here as well. Boom. So y'all can see. And uh, Lerner had also mentioned, speaking of space today, that was some fun space news. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Courtesy of ISRO. So if you haven't heard of a lot of the space news right now, you can probably just look up um, some um, ISRO. You can look up ISRO um, and think about like what's going on. Um, but there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of there's a lot of things going on. Boom. Exactly. Boom. It's how we do it. It's how we do it. All right, y'all. So we have just a couple more minutes left. I'm so glad you had fun. Like, Oh, y'all always like give me so much like love and support. And I just want to give that love and support right back to you. You can do this. Okay. This field is, is, is hard in some ways. It could be hard in some ways, but really like it's so, so, so rewarding. And when my job as both a developer evangelist for Couchbase and, um, and a, a boot camp grad myself, remember, I did not go through a computer science degree. I do not have a computer science degree. Um, I had come through this program called Resilient Coders, which is a nonprofit boot camp, which teaches people of color who are low income in the Boston and Philly areas in the United States to code. Um, and so I'm a boot camp grad, non-traditional, um, but like um, I want to make sure that this field is ex as is as accessible, right, to everyone, not just young folk, old folk as well, right, folk of all ages, right. I want to make sure that this is accessible to folk who have not had um, opportunities to to learn about HTML and CSS, but. I have had such a blast with y'all. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey as well. And next week we're going to be joined. It won't be me streaming with y'all next week. I know I'm going to miss y'all so much, <laughs> but it'll be my incredible colleague, Matt Groves and Matt Groves. He is a product marketing manager, a senior product marketing manager at, um, at um, Couchbase. And um, he is going to be building out another project with you all. So um, Matt is dope. He's super intense, but like I love that energy. He's bring he's going to bring a different energy to the streams as well. Like if you go and look him up on on um, on Twitch, you'll see some of his streams. It's like I'm a hacker. Da, da, na, 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 na. Like yeah, I'm doing the stuff. Like he's awesome. He's awesome. So he's going to be taking over for me next week. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to follow up with y'all the following week. And we're going to work on putting our personal portfolios together. That's right. All the projects that we have built here on, on I was going to say on Couchbase. Here's all the projects that we've built here on stream with the Bad Website Club and Couchbase. We're going to put them all together and put them on your portfolio. So I'm gonna be streaming live how I would put my portfolio together. Come on and join me. As always, there's lots of love for each of you. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful evening. You already know what to do if you're interested in joining our, um, our, uh, our, our 
Oh, Lord. Our Discord, please do um, join the Bad Website Club Discord and the Couch Base Discord, where you'll find me more often. Um, and then um, uh, if you want to chat with me on Twitter as well, follow me at Naya Macklin Dev, and we can talk then. All right, y'all. Much love. Have a wonderful afternoon, evening, and night. And we will talk to you next week with Matt. All right. Hugs. Have a good day. Later. <laughs> Bye.